the great weight debate in karting. How much does weight actually affect your lap times? Well, today I'm at the Villaggio karting circuit to find out. I'm gonna be doing two races, and in the first race, I'm just gonna be setting a benchmark lap time. Bear in mind, I weigh 61 kilos with my karting equipment on. In the second race, however, I'm gonna be adding 15 kilos of ballast weight uh, in the form of a 10 kilo weighted vest, and five kilos of weight which I'll uh, be sitting on. It'll be placed on my cart seat. And let's see what the difference will be. Will I be any faster? Will I be any slower? Well, let's find out. Race one without the ballast weight is happening right now. Catch you then. So as we leave the pit lane now to start race number one, this will be a good chance to go over three important things which you need to understand about this experiment. And firstly, I'll be using cart number 19, as you can see, for both of the races. I'll also be the only go-kart driver on the track, so I won't be hampered by lap traffic. I won't need to overtake any other go-karts. And thirdly, this experiment is specific to the Villaggio karting circuit. You see, track conditions will vary from track to track across the entire world. That's why I encourage the international viewers of this video to give this experiment a go at your go-kart track and share your results. So now that we've covered the three important points, let's cut to the fastest lap of this race one and give you a hot lap. So as we start the lap now, going into turn number one, a long left-hand turn, stay as close as you can to the barriers, but open up the cart now for the double hairpin corner. Middle apex for the first part, middle apex for the second part. Run the cart out as you approach the S section now, make this as straight line as possible, heading towards the 90 degree left-hand turn where you wanna tap the brake, get your turn in done and really take a close middle apex. Last part of the track over here, absolutely floor it up to the line and that should be a 24 second lap time. So there is one thing I noticed after session one which may have lost me a few hundredths of a second and that was through the second part of the double hairpin corner as you can see on the slow-mo replay where I steer right to aim for a middle apex but my cart just judders a lot, it shakes a lot and offsets the balance. And this may be down to uh, me having less weight or maybe even the line I'm taking through there. But if I had more weight, I feel I would have had more grip, which will hence allow me to take a smoother line through that corner and potentially gain a few hundredths of a second. That'll be an interesting thing to look out for come the second session, but we'll find out soon. But first, let's go to my post-race thoughts after session one and see what the exact lap time was. Race one finished. That was a 24.098. The battery died just at the end. I mean, these are electric carts, so it's uh, expected, but let's take a look at the timing screen. So as you can see there, Omar F1, 23 laps, best lap time, 24.098. So let's wait for cart number 19 to charge up again, and we'll go out for the second race, this time adding 15 kilos of ballast weight. So as we're getting ready now for race number two with the ballast weight on, we're just gonna put our race suit on, our balaclava, but before you put your helmet on, you wanna put on the 10 kilo weighted vest, which is actually advertised to be used for uh, exercise such as pull-ups, push-ups, squats. But what the manufacturer didn't tell you is that you can use it for karting. So as you can see now, we're just strapping on nice and comfortably to our body, nice and tight, so we get a snug fit. And as we put our helmet on, a motorcycle helmet, hence you get more weight. Uh, that's the point of this experiment. That's why we're using that. We're now gonna show you the five kilo weight, which we're now gonna be placing on our cart seat. So in the most comfortable way, this is the best way I could do it. Almost like a cushion that is, but it's gonna elevate me slightly on my cart seat. We should be ready now for race number two. So as we leave the pit lane now to start race number two, we have one objective in mind, and that is to see if we can beat 24.0 nine eight seconds which is obviously the benchmark lap time that we set in the first session without the ballast weight so as the session wore on i did get into the groove of things quite quickly i felt immediately there was a lot more grip available to me throughout each and every corner and that meant i would slide a lot less through the corners i had more control over the cart and i could take a much smoother line and specifically through that second part of the double hairpin corner which we were highlighting uh, in the previous session but let's go over the best lap then that we did in a slow-mo version so i can really break it down for you so as we start the flying lap then, obviously heading into the first corner, take a sharp turn in initially and get as close as you can to the barrier as you saw there. Now really control the cart, there's no sliding on exit as you notice, a lot of grip available to me. Heading towards the first hairpin corner, open up the cart slightly, tap the brake now and get your turn in done. Get as close as you can to that middle apex, perfectly executed there. As you can see, no juddering. Now this is the key part over here. Look how smooth my line is through here. And on exit of the turn, 
There's barely any juddering. What a smooth line that was. And I really felt as I brought the car back out on exit to the outside edge, I just had such a good run. Heading to the S section now, make this as straight line as possible. I definitely gained a few uh, hundreds, I'm sure, through that second bar, the double hairpin corner. But now approaching the 90 degree left-hand turn, which you can get wrong quite easily, but here you really want to control it. Heading into the braking zone, tap the brake, get your turning done once more, and no sliding there. A perfectly executed left-hand turn that was. Now it's all about commitment of the car. Get as close as you can to the barriers and snake your way through this section because it's relatively easy to do so flat out of course gets close to the barriers on the last corner now straight line head down if you want as well and there you go that is a 24 second lap time we'll confirm exactly how fast that was as we head over to me post race race two has just finished with the weighted vest it was a lot more physical than the first race there's another session going on at the moment uh, hence the background noise but let's just switch to the timing system to show you the lap time so session two's best lap time was 24.001 seconds. So that's even faster with the ballast weight by 0 0.097 seconds. So we were actually faster in the second race by a few hundredths of a second. And honestly, I felt there was a lot more grip available to me, uh, especially through the double hairpin corners, because in the first race, I was juddering a lot through there, which uh, caused the car to shake a lot. And uh, in the second race, there was absolutely none of that because the grip which I got from the ballast weight allowed me to take a smoother line and hence the lap time was slightly quicker by a few hundredths of a second. Now let's go to the analysis part of the video to really break down and explain how I was able to gain those hundredths of a second. So now I'm going to do my best Anthony Davidson Sky Sports F1 impression and obviously Anthony does the F1 analysis on the Skypad. Well in this case on the left hand side video I'm displaying my best lap from race number two with the ballast weight and in the right hand side video I'm displaying my best lap from race number one without the ballast weight. So we're comparing a 24.001 second lap time to a 24.098 second lap time. Absolutely nothing separating the two laps of course less than a tenth of a second so certain corners are really going to make the difference. So as we roll the footage now heading towards the first corner the red barrier is going to act as a reference point initially. We get to the red barrier and we're neck and neck over here not much to analyze we're side by side so as we continue on with the footage we're going to hug the inside edge now if you're interested to know why i'm taking this kind of racing line check out the kart track masterclass for villaggio as i cover the racing line in great detail there anyway we're approaching the second corner now open up the steering wheel aim for a middle apex where the white barrier is still neck and neck side by side between the two laps but now watch closely on the right hand side video and as we steer in to take an apex at the second part of the double hairpin corner look how much the right hand side video is shaking that's all that juddering and that's actually going to lose me time as we come to the next reference point and you can see i've pulled ahead by half a barrier's length with the ballast weight because i had obviously that smoother line so it's actually given me uh, about as we said half a barrier's length advantage which is about a few hundredths of a second so considerably through that corner we've gained with the ballast weight going through the s section now we're going to take a nice middle apex there both carts and both laps did it quite well next reference point is just going to be at the apex of the latter part of the s section and we're once again maintaining that half a barrier's length gap so with the ballast weight we're still ahead by a few hundredths of a second now it's interesting as we approach the 90 degree left hand turn we have a bit of a straight just to really prepare for it as we steer into a subtle left hand turn which goes into the major 90 degree left hand turn over here tap the brake get your turning done and i'll tell you what on the lap without the ballast weight i was really committing the car into the corner and trying to execute a perfect line whereas i was a bit more conservative with the ballast weight just trying not to slide the cart and all and obviously it was it was a different experience with the ballast weight so i was more committed and that's why i was able to close the gap back down again and we're equal at the moment but now it's all about commitment it's all about smoothness of your line and with the ballast weight i was able to get that and as we absolutely floor it to the line through this final uh, section up to the line now to see what the difference is and that is what 0.097 second difference looks like absolutely nothing in the end so with that guys, we've successfully concluded that if you have more weight or balance weight, 
you can actually get a faster lap time at the Villaggio karting circuit. But I specify the Villaggio karting circuit because once again, as I did earlier in this video, I'll urge and recommend the international viewers of this video to try this experiment at your go-kart track and let me know the results in the comment section down below. Were you faster? Were you slower? What was the difference in uh, the two lap times? And I'll be really intrigued to find out. Furthermore, I recommend you share this video with a friend who may be pestering you about the great weight debate and let them watch this video and find out for themselves. I hope you did enjoy the video guys, I hope you found it informative, let me know your feedback in the comment section below. If you like the video then I'm sure you know exactly what to do. But until the next video guys, I will see you next time.